Welcome to Baltimore. Thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's been a, a good minute here. Yeah, how, how do you prepare for a role like this, or a night like this? Um, well, I was very fortunate. I, I performed the health stalks. Health stalks, I would lift up my eyes, but West Virginia sent to me about 20, 25 years ago, so I was familiar with the work. And uh, Maestro Jason Max Ferdinand called and said, would you sing it for his opening concert here at the University of Maryland? So I said, sure. And I've always wanted to work with him. I know his body of work. I follow him and we follow each other. And so here we are, as they say, eating on that, eating that delicious meal <laughs> pre-Thanksgiving dinner. Right. Yeah. How do you get into the feeling of the Lord's Prayer and... Scripture. The scripture thing. Do you think of anyone while you're singing this? Oh, yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, I uh, happened to be in Exodus uh, singing uh, something about a week ago, uh, Faith Medley, and um, in reading Exodus about Moses seeing the burning bush. And, um, and it's very easy to... Um, um, and I'm not saying that that's the scripture, but I'm saying that that story prepared me for I will lift up my eyes to the hills mm -hmm. in which come my help. Right. And um, that kind of um, study is important because there is always the subtext in English. And the subtext for me is about faith. And when you put the context of the translation in the context of faith, then there's a few other things that are happening, happening with the notes. Right. And uh, then, it, then it becomes more about divine intervention and how do you respond to the presence of God while working on the stage in that, in that regard. Those 16 seconds that you hold some of those notes, wow, amazing. Uh, uh, well, breath support. Um, and also, uh, you measure your energy. You know, um, I'm a dramatic tenor uh, with helding qualities. Some people, uh, I would be called a baritone, depending right. on mm -hmm. the repertoire. If it's light lyric repertoire, I'm more like a baritone if I'm singing Rossini. But I sing a lot of dramatic repertoire now. And, you know, Verdi, Wagner uh, is where I sit a little bit now. And uh, it's all good. It's good. Uh, I'm okay. So how do you feel about your place in life and your future looking ahead? I'm blessed. And I know I am. Um, this is on loan, and um, um, I'm very... A lot of lime and water. <laughs> a lot of lime and water, yeah. Um, you know, one has to take care of himself, diet, food, rest, um, and also study. You know, voice lessons and coachings, they're very important. You need, a, you need another set of ears to tell you uh, if you're out of pocket or, you, you know, dropping the position and all that technical stuff from a vocal pedagogy pedagogical um, point of view um, with the pedagogues that talk about all of that. When I, when I heard you tonight, um, I thought of a mountain of chocolate dripping slowly. <laughs> well, <laughs> and the receptionist at the bottom just collecting the drops. Yeah, that, that's interesting description of my color of my voice. Right. Some, some people say it's like steel under tension. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but that's the mark of a dramatic tenor in the middle part of his voice, in the baritonal quality of yeah. it. And, uh, um, so now you're heading back home. I'm going to go back to Chicago. I, I, I want to say I'm going to rest, but I have so much music I have to learn and prepare. Yeah. So I will spend lots of three and four o'clock in the morning when my brain cuts on and says, go put two or three hours in, I'll do that and then sleep. Early part of the morning, then get back up and then look at the rest of my day and follow my schedule. But I'm always putting in, on average, about three to four hours a day. If I'm early morning rise, if I get up, you know, I'm, I'm packing it in from three to seven, maybe from four to seven, you know. So your neighbors say, here he goes. Well, I'm not singing. I'm actually, <laughs> oh, oh, you're just. I'm learning the notes, looking at the way it's structured by the composer. Um, my next. Concerts involved this composer, Adolphus Hellstock, at okay. New York Philharmonic in, uh, in March, and uh, Dunn made my vow. 
Leslie Dunn is conducting, and then the next one is Hannibal Lukumi, black composer, who's mm-hmm. premiering his opera at Nazareth Symphony okay. in April, and then the B9, uh, the South Dakota Symphony, and Concert Cabal in June. Wow. John Adams, the Deva Klinghoffer, which is a nasty duo. Right, right. You know, and um, Das Lied von der Erde with James Conlon and also Conlon at Baltimore Symphony and then the Royal Opera House and Das Rheingold mm-hmm. next summer. So the next eight months... It's mapped out. It's mapped out where I'm just constantly studying and getting it and absorbing and coaching and taking voice lessons to make sure the voice lines up. Well, it was a pleasure to hear you tonight, and I look forward to hearing you again. Oh, thank you, sir. Appreciate it.